Welcome our dear viewer, this is your show, The Bible Journey. We are glad that you have joined us this day as we get to analyze the book of Exodus, that is in chapter 2. And our title is actually, what you are looking at is basically Moses' birth and flight from Egypt. So that, that is the area that we concentrate upon. And of course, when we, look at, we looked at uh, chapter 1, we saw the suffering of the children of Israel in the land of, in the land of Egypt. But are they learning yet and are they really ready to leave this land that is what we'll be discovering and much more that our dear pastors here will be helping us to analyze now with me on set to help us in analyzing this is pastor dan abuya welcome pastor thank you very much and uh, we also have pastor john kabira or kabira welcome Asante sana. thank you very much maybe pastor dan could you lead us in a word of prayer sure Heavenly Father, we praise you and we thank you for your word and for the privilege of us sitting at your feet to learn from you. We pray that as the true teacher may come by here and teach us so that through our sharing, your children will be blessed as they listen and watch. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much. And of course, our dear viewer, remember that you can always get connected to this show by uh, following our social sites. That is on YouTube. You can view our archived shows on Hope Channel Kenya. And... If you want to comment, comment on this show and even ask questions, you can follow us on Facebook. Our Facebook page is Hope Channel Kenya or at Hope underscore Kenya. And also on Twitter, our handle is at Hope underscore Kenya. Now, let's get to the, our discussion today and the birth of Moses. This chapter 2 is more about Moses in his early days, how he comes into picture mm. and uh, what he does in his early days. And... I'm looking at this, remembering what, putting in mind what we talked about in chapter 1. How is the birth of Moses such a special birth, Pastor Kabir? Well, I'll say it's a very special event because of how it looks. I have to begin by saying, this is, a, this is how we know the Bible inspired. Mm -hmm. The book of Exodus was written by who? By Moses. Mm -hmm. But now... Here is Moses explaining his own story of his own birth. So I, I know some people usually ask like, uh, how, uh, where was Moses? How did he write? Mm -hmm. This is a very good example of how inspiration is works. able to work. Mm -hmm. uh, you and me cannot be inspired. You and me are illuminated. That's what we say. Mm -hmm. Inspiration is on writing God's word. So for us, we can only be illuminated to understand what the pen of inspiration was writing. So, so inspiration has to do with writing and has to do with the Bible completely. Mm -hmm. Illumination is for you to understand. Okay. What you're doing, to, we're trying to do here is uh, me, Dan, and you are trying, uh, we read the Bible, we were illuminated mm -hmm. to understand. What we write will not be inspired. No. What we're speaking is a product of illumination that we were able to read. God gave us the Holy Spirit to understand. Mm -hmm. Now it's very different from Moses here because he, God reveals to him the circumstances before his birth. Mm. I would really love something like that. You know how mm. beautiful that will be. Wow. And so now you're writing. <laughs> Remember the setting that we finished, the last verse we ended with. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, we ended with, uh, last time we ended with, so Pharaoh commanded all his people saying, every son who is born, you shall cast into the river and every daughter you shall save life. Mm. And then, can I say coincidence or not coincidence? Just by divine, you, you know, by divine providence, mm. now we see the story of Moses in relation to what? To the river. Whereas everybody else was being thrown into the river, this is more of a miraculous kind of a scenario. Mm. Where, we, when we'll be seeing the characters, we'll see the flow of events, you'll be able to say, indeed, this was not a normal birth. Mm. Number one, all sons are supposed to be killed. Mm. We don't know how many were killed because we do not see the king coming back to put another measure. So it means, therefore, for the mother to be hiding this child, mm. it means it was a true threat. That's right. Mm -hmm. And so for Moses to be able to survive in all his ways through his birth, Remember uh, the, what the midwife is supposed to do. If a son is born, you kill. Strangle you strangle. Mm -hmm. If it didn't work, throw them into the river. But somehow, Moses is able to go through all that without dying until we see him. And to make, you know, uh, like uh, iron, the irony of it all, mm -hmm. the son who is supposed to be killed mm -hmm. ends up staying at the high place 
ends up staying at the state house. Mm -hmm. He was supposed wow. to die, right. but now he lives yeah. in state house. Mm -hmm. You know how God just plays around yeah. with yeah. what and, we and do? Actually, when you look at verse 2, mm -hmm. uh, it says that uh, so she... So the woman conceived and bore a son, and when he, she saw that he was a beautiful child, she hid him three months. You you can just imagine three months hiding a child, and you know how they want <laughs> how to cry. cry. Yeah, right, you right. know yeah. it's very it's just actually a special providence mm -hmm. from God. Maybe yes. Pastor Dan. Right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, very quite uh, providential. But just just let me need. This is not very major, but I think in our circumstances it's worth mentioning. Mm -hmm. um, the conviction, uh, what gives uh, Moses' mother and mm -hmm. family together the courage to dare the king. You know, they, they were daring the king. Mm -hmm. You were meant to get a son, surrender mm -hmm. the son. So basically, it's like, uh, uh, what is, the baby is coming out and you're like, uh, uh, what is that? It's, it's a baby girl? Oh, praise God. Is a baby boy? Oh, because mm -hmm. we have to surrender mm -hmm. the baby for killing him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But here is a mother, another woman, once again, daring the king by defying his order mm. Mm -hmm. and uh, hiding <coughs> the baby. What gives her the courage? I, it seems something. The Bible says that the child looked special. The mm. child looked mm -hmm. pleasing. Mm -hmm. He was so goodly. goodly. Yeah. It was a beautiful Samantha. child so well. Beautiful so well mm -hmm. that uh, the mother was like, no. no. This one we can't kill. The, this one we can't, we can't give away. Mm. We, it, it, won't, it won't be killed. And just allow me to connect this in uh, Acts chapter 7. When uh, Stephen is about to be stoned, mm. Samuel brings this uh, scene up. Mm. And uh, in verse uh, 20, of course, he's, he's trying to give the history, wide history of uh, why he's uh, ready to die for the gospel. Mm -hmm. you know, that's why he was martyred. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, verse 17, uh, he talks about Moses, how he delivers Israel. And look at this, verse 20. Mm -hmm. At this time, Moses was born and was well pleasing to God, mm. and he was brought up in his father's house for three months. Three months is critical here. Just want to mention to our mothers. Mm -hmm. We are living at a time when, you know, you, our working ladies, they get uh, yeah. Just, uh, <laughs> maternity leave. Huh? Yeah, yeah generally given uh, three months. Yeah, three months, three yeah. Months. And uh, we very easily surrender our little babies to the mates, mm. and off we go back to work. This was hard for Moses' mother to do because it was so pleasing. So on a light note, I don't know whether I know circumstances are very hard and we have to go back and work. Mm -hmm. But is your child that ugly? <laughs> okay, <laughs> let, me, let me say, okay. is your child <laughs> not you that pleasing months. enough? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. For you let to me use the to positive use language. Yeah, mm -hmm. just to surrender them that easily. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I think because of the work pressure, getting that extra uh, mm -hmm. pay, the truth is that the influence that Moses uh, would uh, get because mm. of the mother, almost yes. like stay at home mother, mm -hmm. many of our kids are not getting it nowadays. I think you need to consider and appreciate the beauty, mm. the privilege of being stewards of these little precious mm -hmm. babies. So, somebody was telling me that right. one question would be asked in heaven mm. is where is the little flock? That you wouldn't be asked right. about the wealth you accumulated and the salary <laughs> and anything, but yeah. that will be, so we need to really consider sure. that there is, as, as uh, Sorry, sure. there is a verse that you've read mm -hmm. that brings the faith angle mm -hmm. of the mother. All right, all right. Hebrews 11, 23. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. By right, faith, right. Moses, when he was born, mm. was hidden three months by his parents mm. because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's command. Mm -hmm. exactly. It was right. an act of faith right. that this child, mm. this, this child is going far. Mm. You know, right. to look at a child and be able to determine mm. this is not just any random child. Mm. This child is going far. I will do all I can. I will risk my life for this child. For sure then that was our knock yeah. faith, a good one. Mm. Uh, now, le let me move you quickly because so, of time. So, yes, so Nick, the circumstances were very unique. Yeah. yeah. It was Providential. Very, yeah. yeah. And, and, and of course, we'll be looking is, more at, right. uh, at Moses as we continue this discussion because I think that Moses is such a special kind of a person right. th that was appointed for this particular time. Mm. But let me take you to the book of Matthew, chapter 2, and I want to read Matthew 2, 18, which says... A voice was heard in Rama, lamentation, weeping, and a great mourning. Rachel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted because they are no more. Now, look at the uh, presiding uh, incidences where mm. the king has said, if it be a male child, kill him, strangle him at birth. Mm. If 
Uh, uh, again, if that fails, like uh, Pastor was saying in our previous uh, discussion, right. uh, he said that uh, if that fails, then throw, throw them in the into river. the rivers. That's right. Now, you see, there is, I, I want to imagine that children were being born, many of them. It's mm. not mentioned, Moses just mentioned in a few cases, True. but many were being born. And is this verse relating to what he's saying here? And why in particular Rachel? <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. I think chapter 1 also discussed about Rachel. We just didn't talk about it. Mm. The yeah. chiastic uh, structure yeah. of uh, chapter the, the, 1. The children. Mm -hmm. The children. Uh, children. Uh, the, the Jacob's children. And the two wives. And the two wives are arranged in a chiastic structure. That is, uh, you know, an A, B, A. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it will be understood for now. <laughs> yeah. But the center <laughs> is Rachel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The center of the naming of the children That's was right. Rachel. Mm -hmm. So now maybe we'll be able to quote it because of Jesus Christ coming. Mm -hmm. Moses prefigures an aspect mm -hmm. of Christ. Right. When we'll be ending chapter 2, chapter 2 will end by saying, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the God people, the children of Israel, verse 23, the children of Israel groaned because of the bondage and they cried out and their cry came up to God because of the bondage. That's mm -hmm. how this chapter will end. Mm -hmm. Of course, without going ahead, it's so people cried and there was a child who was given out right. to be able right. to solve their problem. Like, God has heard your cry. Mm -hmm. Let me show you. Mm -hmm. when, the, when people cried, when sin was so much, when the fullness of time came, Christ came. Mm -hmm. That's, I'm, I'm trying to connect uh, the reading of, uh, of, uh, of Matthew to now Moses. Mm. So our, we, we our can Moses be able to... Yes, type. Mm -hmm. Yes, our, oh, good, I was mm -hmm. looking for the word type. Mm -hmm. Moses is now a type of Jesus. Mm -hmm. and, and how is he a type of Jesus? What is the similarity between Moses and Jesus that makes mm -hmm. him a type of Jesus Christ? Which is the most beautiful part of this whole scenario. Right. We are studying Moses because he saved. Mm -hmm. That's right. He may not have saved, but he was properly mm -hmm. in charge of leading the Israelites out of, out of slavery yeah. mm -hmm. to what to canaan mm. the same thing jesus is doing interrupt you, you continue yes. the thought is the same you know jesus mm. uh, which means he will save their people mm -hmm. from, from their the bondage of sin yeah. mm -hmm. yes so, so you see that that's a, that of course as i'm saying it's that angle of uh, Rene. but so many times as we'll be reading we'll see moses being told almost being called We'll understand by then when they say, and Moses, you will be God and to Aaron. Right. And you will get to that point because Moses was so lifted up, he took almost the position of Christ in terms of communication. Let me say in terms of communication. Mm -hmm. Just like Jesus took a part of us. You remember the fearlessness, the character, going through the 40 years of mm -hmm. a trial. Everything looks like it was Jesus. The special birth, mm -hmm. the preservation of it, mm -hmm. trying to kill the, the sons, running away and uh, to another place. All that happened to him almost looks like it's a photocopy of what happened also to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Remember during the time of Jesus, they wanted to kill all the male children. Right. Yes. And yeah. Moses was... King I, mean, yeah. King yeah. Joe, I mean... I, I'm saying called uh, King Herod wanted to yeah. kill these sons. Mm -hmm. and so in the end it looks like it's the same. Mm -hmm. But of course as I'm assuming, Moses came to give us the law, while Christ also says, says it was written, now I tell you. Right. It was written, now I tell you. So there is this, uh, you know, Striking similarity. I don't know how I'll be able so to So maybe, uh, <laughs> let me be near for a moment, the, mm -hmm. the, you just mentioned about even him fleeing. Mm -hmm. The only thing I'm seeing here, Christ flees away from Egypt. Moses flees. <laughs> <laughs> from Christ Egypt? flees to Egypt. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Moses, yeah. Moses, Moses flees away Egypt. from Egypt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. of course, I, and I, I appreciate that aspect because then at all times, we, we are going, as we continue with the journey, we get so many Bible characters mm. who prefigure who are a type of Christ, but who can never be Christ. Yes, mm. who will never So they will always fall short mm -hmm. of Christ because nobody will ever be fully Christ. But eventually, yet. Moses, you'll agree with me, Moses prefigures Christ more than any other character in the Bible because when you look at uh, what Moses is doing and the journey that you are going to take through the book of Exodus mm. is more or less the same with what Christ did uh, that he, we are also on a journey and Christ is taking us through. And much of what happened to Moses happened to Christ. They were always a free, free figure of the same. But then let me also ask this question. Mm -hmm. How does the birth of Moses also prefigure the birth of Jesus Christ? What's the relation? I, I, I think that's what, uh, yes, I was trying that's to what he, he has mentioned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he comes at a time the king has given a command, all male children, they be killed. And so that is also what Herod has just commanded. Uh, and uh, the context of the verse that you read there, you know Christ is being born 
and Herod has given a command because oh, okay. he's afraid that one male child will be born who will take over mm -hmm. his seat here. Mm -hmm. yes. And that is the same fear also. That is what is driving Pharaoh also here. Mm -hmm. he's, a, he's insecure. He's an insecure leader, just mm -hmm. like Herod. Mm -hmm. yes. That my kingdom, my throne will be taken away by these Israelites who are mighty and great. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so th the circumstances are quite similar in that, uh, in that sense. And so, uh, but there is an escape plan, uh, which uh, because God has got, has elected him. Remember we were talking about election yeah. and service? Yeah. yeah, and so that is what we are also seeing here. I, I'm, not I'm, I'm sure that uh, it's not that God didn't care for the male, many other male children who died. It's only that uh, Moses is being saved because he has been elected a, a for service. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. for, for now, service. Let's, let's look at, uh, you remember the midwives? These yes. were women. Yes. Now yeah. we are talking about the mother of Moses mm -hmm. and we are also talking about the sister to Moses and uh, we are also talking at, at the same time about mm -hmm. Pharaoh's daughter in, That's right. in verse 9. Yes. So the princess. Uh, do you see it as a deliberate effort that God is in a way using women more for his purpose? <laughs> right. Just like uh, Matthew. Mm. You remember that the story of Matthew it centered on more on women again. Mm. Mary Elizabeth, That's right. you, you know, there is, there is an angle. Many people have assumed that Christianity is a very patriarchal. Mm. It gives an idea of a, a very patriarchal society. Mm -hmm. It indeed was a patriarchal society. Mm -hmm. And we sometimes carry the same thinking into our modern churches mm. where men dominate the entire, uh, the entire plan of worship, the entire leadership, church structure, and what have you. Here is Jesus himself very being very deliberate. The salvation of uh, Israelites depended so much on women. All right. Mm -hmm. The Hebrew midwives mm -hmm. were told to do this. They said no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They chose to right. totally disobey. Mm -hmm. Then we have here and a man of the house of Levi not mentioned. Mm -hmm. A man, that's how the yeah, chapter yeah. 2 begins. <laughs> took mm -hmm. as wife a daughter of Levi. Mm -hmm. Of course, there is that special angle of uh, the birth of Moses, mm -hmm. that he was from a very Levitical uh, yeah. priesthood, so, I mean Levitical yeah. place. Mm -hmm. The woman conceived, yeah, the, the whole point is, we are now, apart from the word Moses, we are seeing again and again the woman being mentioned. Right. Whether they are Israelites women or not, mm -hmm. including Pharaoh's daughter. Hmm. If it, we were joking here and saying, <laughs> if it was a Pharaoh's prince rather than Pharaoh's uh, yeah. son. daughter, son, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it was a son rather than the daughter, <laughs> Moses, Moses would not have survived. Yeah. Yeah. Look so. at, <laughs> you know, look at the irony of it all. Mm. That finally, a man is saved by women. Mm. That if it wasn't for these women, we will no longer be talking about the story of Moses. Mm. That despite Moses having a brother who is called Aaron, who became mm. more dominant than uh, Miriam. Mm. We now have uh, Miriam make, being more dominant on the life That's and right. upbringing of uh, the brother Moses. The, of course, uh, from mm. when to what he read in Acts and Hebrews, mm. it was an act of both. Mm. Because it says he was brought up by his parents, was brought up by his parents. Mm -hmm. But then here is where we're able to see, it's like Moses was very deliberate. Remember, it's Moses once again. Don't mm. forget, it's mm. Moses writing mm. this. Yeah. So it seems Moses was very deliberate to say that this salvation has got up, I mean, uh, is, uh, will be contributed greatly by women and both men mm. at very particular time. Mm. Good or bad, Christian or non-Christian, let me just put it like that, Christian mm. or non-Christian, women have got a big role to mm. play mm -hmm. right. in this. It may look patriarchal, it may look male-dominated, mm. but it surely begins from women. Mm -hmm. yes, right, let yeah. me bring in Pastor Bui on yeah. the same. Uh, mm -hmm. God using women and bringing them out predominantly in right. his plan of salvation. Mm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, you know, it's just amazing and uh, just allow me now to add a contemporary twist huh, mm -hmm. to this um, after what uh, Pastor said. I think the mothers and their place, it is, you can't have a more glorious task mm -hmm. as women. Mm -hmm. And once again, you know, because uh, this is our generation, let's, mm -hmm. let's talk to our generation. Mm -hmm. We are young pastors and uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of our um, mothers, you know, young women, uh, most of them working nowadays, they aspire to the glory of the corporate world. You want to rise up in the corporate ladder, be at the apex, and that is okay. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with that here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yet, oftentimes, we neglect 
the first queenly duty that is of child upbringing. Mm -hmm. There is nothing more glorious mm -hmm. that uh, can replace the upbringing of children. The influence that the mothers and the women have much more than the fathers here. Yeah. So this is one area that this, this uh, is, um, uh, is over here. And you see what mm -hmm. happens in verse 9. <coughs> yes. Uh, I mean, Moses' uh, sister is there, so she plays, and she was a very wise girl, you know, Miriam. She's a child at this time, yeah. But look the way she plays out, eventually convincing the Pharaoh's daughter that, you know what, there, there's, a, there's a lady who just <laughs> lost her. <laughs> yeah, that is from verse 7, yeah. Shall mm -hmm. I go and call a nurse for you from the Hebrew women that she may nurse the child for you? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. So the maiden went and called the child's mother. Verse 9, then Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child away and nurse him for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman <laughs> took the child and nursed him. Nursed nursed him. him. Mm. You can imagine, later on, the life of Moses, the way it plays out, it is really because of the early influence mm -hmm. of the mother. Mm -hmm. I wish mothers would uh, appreciate. You know, I'm trying they to imagine. Place oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at right. this lady. She was, uh, what I was just wanted to add on how this mm. mother is. Mm. Three months, I mean, she takes care of this three months, realizes I'm going to lose this child, mm. and then does some weird thing. H how she came up with the idea of to make a small act. Mm. Right. That's what I'm imagining. Imagine the mothers of today mm. doing all they can. And finally, she gets paid wages to bring <laughs> up her, <laughs> her own <laughs> child. Her own child. <laughs> her own child. Yeah. It's beautiful wow. in a way that right. this was a mother who was determined at all costs. Mm. I can imagine this mother the pain of giving I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm take her, uh, this is a Pharaoh's daughter. Wait, 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 you belong to Pharaoh's daughter. But then after, when the child comes back, like, don't forget your mind. But That's still, right. you know, go back mm. and say, you. that kind wow. to bring up Moses like that in a dual life. Let me say in a dual life. Mm. I look like a maid now, you go get your salary. We may think she's lying, but she was just doing all she could mm. to ensure Moses has got the best life. Wow, mm. wow. Thank you, thank wow. you. Let, right. Let's take a short break, our dear viewer. Then we resume and continue talking about uh, this Moses uh, birth and flight from Egypt. There are a lot of things that we are learning here. And I hope that you are really benefiting from our discussions today. So don't go away. We are coming back shortly. Mm. back our dear viewer to this show the bible journey we are glad that you are still with us and remember that you can always connect us on our social media platforms that is on twitter at hope underscore kenya on, on our facebook page hope channel kenya and also on youtube hope channel kenya thank you very much for st sticking with this program now welcome back our dear uh, our dear analysts thank to this you. program i want to call you viewers again okay now let's continue with this uh, discussion when you look at uh, the upbringing of moses mm -hmm. and uh, I'm, I'm just trying to imagine the mother you know she is so committed like you've already said and uh, she she takes all the risk plus the whole family of uh, family of course yeah. but you see her leading out in that and mm -hmm. uh, until moses uh, is grown up to three months when she cannot hide him anymore that's when she says okay let let me look and be creative look for some ways to preserve him so that at least even if he died i don't know if that was in his in, in her mind at least away from me but you know she's so committed to that Plus the sister, she is also committed and takes care of the. She keeps on watching mm -hmm. how the that basket is is uh, being flown by the by the waves. Yeah. Right. The, how how do we really want to relate this with our mothers? I've heard you talk about it to to the mothers, yes. But do you want to add more voice to that? Yeah. Thanks for the opportunity to emphasize that. We mm -hmm. can't overemphasize that because um. Uh, the very early influences mm. uh, on the children, they determine how they turn out and uh, the character, the values formation and um, you know the mothers have got uh, a major role in this. Mm. It's not of that the fathers... Uh, in Proverbs 22.6 yeah. talks about it. Very exactly, yeah, you know, mm. you train up a child mm. in the way he should go and uh, when he's old, 
mm. you won't depart from it. And that's what we see in the life of Moses, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I speak this, you know, with that, because this is where I am. This is the stage where, where, where we are. Mm -hmm. We are bringing up children right now. And it does not uh, preclude the fathers. It is just that the influence of the mothers is much more, mm. is much more on the children than even fathers uh, perhaps uh, could be. So we, it's just a prayer or maybe an appeal mm. that we the pray mothers. for the grace of God, yeah, mm -hmm. the mothers. It is hard, yes, it is challenging, yes, you need that extra salary in the family, yes, but then the priority is this. You don't mm. want to rise up and you're earning all uh, you can earn in the corporate world, then you use that money to rehabilitate mm -hmm. mm. the children who you neglected much, much earlier. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the, the, uh, and I'm sure uh, Moses' dad was in the picture. I don't think he was washing bars. The, the, mm. the, 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 the wife was uh, creating the basket and all that. Mm. Even Aaron, you know, the older brother is there. But uh, I think uh, scripture focuses on uh, women at this stage because of the critical role mm -hmm. that, uh, that they have. It is so, so glorious. And um, Sister White, uh, uh, you know, in the book uh, Patriots and Prophets, uh, page 244, she speaks uh, to the power of the influence of mothers at this particular uh, stage. Mm -hmm. The work of a Christian mother, you cannot. And even the great figures in our history, many of them, you go back and check the influence of the mothers there. It is you can't discount it uh, mm -hmm. away. Mm -hmm. So now l let's talk a little bit about the name Moses. And uh, you know, in in verse ten it says, "And the child grew, and she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he called, uh, and he became her son. So she called his name Moses, saying, because I drew him out of the water.' I've heard people talking about the importance of of names, and I don't know how special is this name." Moses. I, I will say uh, for Moses to keep the name, mm. it's the only thing that he kept that was Egyptian in him. I will maybe say like that. So probably it was, I will just say it's probably because we do not have any scriptural uh, uh, evidence or for anything mm. to put more weight on it. When he was called, because the Bible says, because I drew him out, out of, the, of water. the water. Because perhaps Moses kept it to remind of himself of the miraculous design of his calling. The miraculous way in which he was brought up. Mm -hmm. You know, to always remember, this is the child who was drawn out of water. Uh, this is the child. If he had been called maybe a random name, people would not have gotten it. Mm -hmm. I can imagine, uh, uh, look at his uh, later, Miriam and his brother complaining about Moses. Look at him being a stammer and water view. Mm. But the fact that they'll remember this is a child who was in water, mm. maybe it made a bigger impact on people. Because even today, we like remembering. When people go through a challenge and they overcome, we like remembering them through that particular angle. Mm. Right. So we'll always be say like our founding father, we said he was in prison for several years. Mm. Nelson Mandela, we remember him for his previous life, which has now contributed to his mm. present life. Mm. So I'm assuming just to summarize, it's mm. more of, it meant something to him to mm -hmm. keep the name as a mm -hmm. reminder of how far he's come. Or, or even yeah. probably because of, uh, of, of uh, you know, as a way of re respect to, you know, the daughter of Pharaoh, she saved him. It's yeah. through her mm. that she was saved. Maybe, you know, if somebody right. brings you up mm. and uh, later you really want to respect this person because they have taken care of you and all such things, Maybe I'm just yeah, the, also the, using the daughter, <laughs> probably. Yeah, probably. Yeah. The daughter <laughs> of uh, Pharaoh uh, deserves, uh, you know, that mention mm -hmm. because of uh, kindness, kind heart. a kind heart. Yeah. Yeah. But really, you know, first I'm thinking <laughs> that this is a mockery on Pharaoh. Yes, I mean, this is a mockery on Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. For the rest of uh, Moses' life, Pharaoh knows that <laughs> you were defeated. He ordered that all male children, children be thrown in into the water. Now then here a child is a child living in the, drawn in out the of palace, the <laughs> drawn out of water <laughs> yes. by your very own, own daughter. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, it is a mockery of a kind and, um, uh, you know, it's a declaration of victory of God over his enemies. So when Psalms 23, 5 says that you set a table <laughs> <laughs> before <laughs> before me in the, of in the presence of my enemies. Mm. That it's is what true. every day Moses is seated there eating with Pharaoh on the same table. And it's like Moses, oh, you were drawn, you know, I commanded you be thrown in water, you were, <laughs> and you're yeah, asking, yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. serious. So, God is victorious always, and let me just add one more text here, mm -hmm. Psalm 76, verse 10. Mm. 
it says that surely the wrath of man shall praise you. With the remainder of wrath, you shall guard yourself. The enemies of God, when they plot the downfall for his people, mm. he turns back on them. You know, we, we know this Mordecai and all this, the way things turn around against you. Mm. So I think the name uh, Moses, uh, I, would, I would say for, for me, it's just in addition to what, uh, you know, Pastor said. Mm. But also in addition, it is declaring the victory. God's purposes, there is nothing you're going to do to stop them. Yeah, yeah. yeah so He's really playing in, in a powerful <coughs> way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, in, in verse 11, and uh, 12, which I'll beg to read, says, mm. Now it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown that he went out, of his, uh, out to his brethren and looked at their burdens. And he saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his brethren. So at least he understood these were his brethren. Verse 12, So he looked at this way and that way. And when he saw no one, he killed the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. <laughs> then 13, and when he went out the second day, behold, two Hebrew men were fighting, and he said the one to, uh, and he said to the one who did the wrong, "Why are you striking your companion?" Verse fourteen. Then he said, "Who made you a prince and a judge bit over us? Do you intend to kill me as you killed the Egyptian?" Now I have two questions on these uh, four verses. Mm -hmm. Number one. Uh, what was wrong in Moses' act of, uh, you know, trying to defend his brethren and uh, eventually, of course, killing him? I don't know if the intention was really to kill, but I think the first intention was to defend the oppressed. What was wrong with his act of defending, which led to eventually him killing the Egyptian, Pastor Kabir? Well, I would say it's natural for all of us. Sometimes when you see... Uh, he saw an Egyptian and a Hebrew who were mm. fighting, mm. and he decided to save the Hebrew because in the way to not because you know like he was not the because he it could have been the Hebrew one was wrong, mm. but uh, he decided to save our own, my own. You know that is a very big indictment about how God deals with us. Mm. According to us, Moses thought he was doing God's work. You know, in his mind, he knew his God's work, but then God was trying to tell him now. I will call you, then I will enable you. Mm. You don't call yourself. Mm. In this ministry, just it's me and Pastor Dan here, we may feel like we are called, but until God calls you, that is when mm. you need, you'll be able to work. Mm. This other time, it will be you thinking on your own. And that's why Moses, now here is a reflection of Moses being a complete human. This is why he cannot prefigure Christ completely. Right. Mm -hmm. Because right. he was a normal human being mm. with tribal weakness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he did not solve this uh, problem. You'll see it later. Mm. Oh, when yeah. he was now solving, remember there were Egyptians who came with Israelites. Mm. When they went to, when they went to, when they were on their journey to Canaan, mm. during Exodus, the Egyptians. But this time around, he was clever. Here, he's solving a problem based on my tribe. Mm -hmm. He's not solving a problem based on mm -hmm. it's right yeah. and wrong. Mm -hmm. And God says, no, that is not what I really wanted. Including the people he tried to save later, mm. they tell him, like, do you want to kill us? They did wow. not notice that uh, he was trying to s help them. What they saw is the killing part. Mm -hmm. Because why? A wrong is always a wrong, even mm -hmm. if it's to your own people. Yeah, so right. Moses was trying to help his own people by doing their own things. Right. He forgot that the Lord mm -hmm. can do it for him. Mm -hmm. The Lord will still fight, the Lord but will in fight. a different way. But in, in, a, in, a, in the right way, let me say, in his own right manner, mm -hmm. at the right time, particular time. Right. He was trying, it's more like he was trying to poke God into action. Mm -hmm. You know, like doing this. Then he realized that God wants, you know, even if it's between a Christian and a Christian, God will not stand on the side of Christians despite you being having done wrong. Mm -hmm. He will always be like, what you did was wrong. That's right. That's right. So in the end, it is what about what is right, right and wrong. Mm -hmm. Notice, you're a Christian and non-Christian, you're Adventist and non-Adventist. Mm -hmm. That does not hold water. Yeah. Before God, it will be right and wrong. Mm -hmm. And including the society, including our own people, will judge us on right and wrong. So right. what was wrong here was not the intention, uh, the, the purpose of Moses in trying to help, the, the style was wrong, that he wasn't called to do it that way. And uh, actually God had not called him to do it, but he thought, okay, I have to help. We always want to help, but 
he did it in a wrong way he did can i say his motivation for helping was, was not to solve the problem yeah. his motivation was to help in, my own out of emotions and my own or the, my, my own tribe let me use because mm -hmm. it's the kenyan version of the it's yeah. uh, <laughs> whether my understand. whether my person yeah. in this tribe is right or wrong mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it doesn't you know if you really wanted to solve and that's why it was a general weakness until Jethro tells Moses, you need to select leaders mm -hmm. to be able to do this for right, you. Right. Moses had that weakness, which is what I'm saying is, Moses was a normal human being, despite mm -hmm. his special birth, his special upbringing and all that. Mm -hmm. He was still a normal human being mm -hmm. that God chose to take a sinful, normal human being and make him a savior of an entire nation. Mm -hmm. That was the plus for me, especially for me as a pastor. I know God can take the weak me, mm -hmm. the sinful me. Could, could you hold that uh, for just for a minute uh, before yes. we come to that actually in God choosing weaker vessels and using them mm -hmm. in a greater extent. But looking at uh, verse 14, verse 14, Pastor Abuya says that uh, then he said, who made you a prince and a judge over us? Do you intend to kill me as you killed the Egyptian? And you know, in verse 11, it says that he looked this way and that way and mm. discovered that nobody was watching. Maybe you've and not ended him? verse 14. Verse 14? I'm You're not supposed ready? To end, end it. Okay, okay. Do you intend to kill me as you killed the Egyptian? So Moses feared and said, mm -hmm. surely this thing is known. Yes. So right. he thought uh, that it hasn't been noticed. Right. And uh, <laughs> up to this point, he mm -hmm. knew that actually nobody knows. Mm -hmm. But then the scene finds him. In Numbers 32 verse 23 says, but if you do not so, then take note, you have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sin find will you find out. you out. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at the part, uh, the part of, you know, sometimes we, want to, we commit sin, yeah. and we think that nobody noticed, or, right. mm -hmm. you know, it's not known. But the sin finds that out like it did to Moses. What did you say about that? Yeah, I mean, uh, all, all our actions, uh, there are consequences. Mm -hmm. There is nothing that we can do uh, that is hidden from the eyes of God. Uh, you know, Psalms 139, uh, it talks uh, that uh, whether I go to the deepest, mm -hmm. you know, parts of, uh, of the earth, of the sea, there you still are, and you, God is put to discern everything, including our intents, you know, as uh, Hebrews uh, says, uh, including our intents, huh? Mm -hmm. uh, that uh, uh, and our motivations, yeah. So uh, on many fronts, Moses here had an issue. In fact, even if we give him benefit of doubt, mm -hmm. Pastor, that you know he felt injustice, mm -hmm. and injustice is one of the things that makes me, you know, seeth mm -hmm. with wrath. You yes. know, I get angry mm -hmm. when I feel that um, there's an injustice, there's an injustice being done. Mm -hmm. Uh, on myself, but especially so when I feel that somebody is being uh, unjustly treated. Mm -hmm. That really makes me angry. But still, even with that, he was not justified to mm -hmm. kill another human being. And uh, I think another thing that I find here mm -hmm. that uh, Moses had a challenge with was that uh, he was trying to do things in his own power. Yes. Mm -hmm. and you know, Zechariah 4 says that mm -hmm. not by, not by might, power. not, not by, by power, power mm -hmm. but by the spirit mm -hmm. uh, of the Lord. So, so God has his own agenda. It goes on his own terms. So we are not going to beat people down with our doctrine, with our reform <laughs> to save them. <laughs> you know, it is the spirit of God that saves, uh, that saves people. Mm -hmm. Yet at the same time also, Pastor, mm -hmm. what you already shared about uh, verse 14, the question, mm -hmm. it, is, uh, it must have felt very terrible and lonely for Moses when he's trying to, uh, to save, yeah. <laughs> you know, his own people. Mm -hmm. And uh, they reject him. Actually, this is rejection here. Yes, mm. do you want yeah. to kill us? You, you eh? also want to kill us? Who made you judge mm. between mm. us? And the guy is simply out to save them. Mm -hmm. He tells you the mother did her job well, reminding him every day that, hey, remember, you're a yeah, special you're child, special. child of God, God has a purpose for you. Mm. And so once again, the shadow of Christ, he has seen in Moses, mm. remember, John chapter 1, mm -hmm. he came to his own, and his own received him. Not. Not. Mm. They rejected him. Mm. But verse 12, I think, is the one that says that power. But for all who received him, he gave them the power to be the children of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, there is that angle there. I think Moses got it wrong when he started doing, solving things mm -hmm. in, uh, his in his own, own power. power. Mm -hmm. Galatians 4 4. Eh? Uh -huh. okay. Yes. What the time. Oh, oh. Yes, I'm, it's about time. I'm, I'm talking about time. Mm -hmm. God had planned a time when he will save, mm -hmm. but then Galatians says, in the fullness of time. Of so time. Uh, yes, wow. in the fullness yeah, of yeah, yeah. God works with time. Many of us sometimes think like we can influence God to do something 
we forget when it is time for God to act, mm -hmm. whether you'll be ready or not, God will be mm -hmm. have done his Actually work. Yes. Now, so, Pastor, could you talk about Moses runs away and uh, he meets the family of Jethro and eventually he marries Zipporah, <laughs> uh, who is not an Israelite. Later, he will talk about such relations and mm. he condemns them. <laughs> right. Yet he himself is married to right. a non-Israelite. Mm. Uh, and uh, uh, also, his, can you talk basically about his family briefly because I see time is not on our side. Well, uh, briefly, uh, we all know the we when Pharaoh hears about what Moses has done, I thought he will give the story of, uh, you know, the, the normal story of yeah. look right, look left, and oh then yeah. you think you cross, <laughs> and then you forget oh yeah. on top looking up. Oh uh, yeah. That's what I thought he would say. Right. <laughs> you said it now. Yeah. Nah, I have said it. So God is right. here from above. He's yeah. watching you doing right, left, left, right. Then there's nobody. When you think you're crossing the road, then something falls from you from the top. <laughs> and that's God right. looking. So now yeah. he runs away. Ultimately, it gets to Pharaoh, mm. and uh, Moses runs away. And then the story looks more like uh, Jacob's story and Isaac's story. That's right. He goes all the way to the well. The mm. well was, uh, I mean, a life. It was a life-giving resource That's that right. was for community. Mm. So he gets, just l let's say, by divine providence. How do you walk and then get to the well at the exact time somebody is fetching water mm. to be able to help somebody fetch mm. water? And when yeah. you help that person to fetch water, that person says, thank you, mm -hmm. let's go home. And when you go home, you become a wife. Mm. You should be able to see like, you know, God has a way of, you know, you get married. You work the, the things, mm. uh, your weaknesses, God makes, a, it says every time you turn left, God turns you to the right. You turn to the left again, God takes you to the right. He uses your every left turn to take you to a right turn to be able to bring you closer wow. to the divine providence. Amen. So the whole story of Moses is based on his mistakes, God makes them right. Mm -hmm. His mistakes, his weakness, his murmurings, his whatever, his anger issues, God takes them right. So he gets here, he finds Jethro, of course we know by here in verse 18 he's called Reuel. Eh? Reuel. 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 Mm -hmm. And he's surprised how his daughters have arrived back uh, so, so, so quickly. And mm -hmm. he says, then if that's the case, mm. this is a very good man. Because if he's a stranger who helped you, that he's wow. worth it. To, to say thank you. All over mm. again. Yeah, mm. To say thank you. Uh, please uh, come, stay, come take one of my daughters. And so he picks Zipporah. And that's all. And they get a child who is called Gershom. Mm. I do not want to speculate. I don't want to get there. But the family of Moses takes a back step into his life, especially during his service. Mm. I'm not saying they were not important. They but were. what I'm saying is, they take a back step. Sometimes, I don't know for what reason, we will get it when we will get there, we will discuss when we get there. But his family is more like, let's wait and uh, our work is to support this support man of him. God. Mm. Yeah. Just like ministers. <laughs> now, uh, <laughs> and, and, and pastor, you know, I, I don't know, do you see something there? Because I remember mm. when... Uh, Eliezer, the servant, the steward that's of right. Abraham, was uh, trying to find a wife for Isaac. Isaac, yeah, that's uh, true. He met her at the well. That's right. You know, she, she was needy. She needed some help. Mm. And that's how she, he helped her. And eventually, she turns out to be Isaac's wife. That's right. The same, same case for Moses. Jacob and later. Also Jacob even later Jacob also. later, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Isaac's son. Yeah. What you do say that, and especially, you know, a message yeah. to the youth concerning yeah. the same. I think the young man should be walking nearby well. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> that means look for somebody who is working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just on a light note, yeah. Yeah, I think the, the virtues of uh, helpfulness, of mm -hmm. um, the diligence and all that, uh, just um, because really this is what, uh, this is the, the catch here. Mm. Yeah, all this, the common thread is that they are helpful. Mm. They are people who love justice. You know, the other mm. uh, shepherds are coming, pushing them away. And it's like, hey, hey, ca come on, you can't, that is unfair. So I think uh, our youth uh, need to know that uh, you simply need to, most important, to develop the inner person. Mm. Those virtues, when they are there, you know, a lot of these struggles also, uh, mm -hmm. they, they will yes. sort uh, themselves, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and allow me quickly to add... Uh, uh, maybe uh, as you add, uh, mm -hmm. just briefly in uh, maybe some seconds because okay. of time, right, yeah. you can also, you know, there's something that, that we left out hanging, I think it was by Pastor Kabira mm -hmm. there, about right. uh, God using weaker vessels for right. his service. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, maybe just finish on your point, then he touches mm -hmm. on that and we wind up with uh, verse 23, 25. Right, yeah. Um, 
so because you asked like uh, later on Moses is giving a command mm. you know, to marry mm -hmm. you yeah, know yeah, sure. yeah so um, th this uh, how do I how do I put this here you know God's people are not the Israelites now to put this mm. Israelites are God's people mm -hmm. God's people are not just the Israelites mm -hmm. yes. they are all people yeah. here. this the priest of Midian he seems to be one righteous man just like mm. Job mm. you know Job was a man from the east yeah mm. yes. you know he doesn't seem to be part of uh, you know the this Israelite chosen of God yeah. yeah but he was a righteous man and God has them throughout mm. uh, all over here and of course this also uh, law comes later Mm. It's at Sinai, also when he gets it, now they abide by it. Mm. Many others are given, like you can't marry your sister and all that. But you know, uh, Cain said they had been marrying their sisters mm -hmm. from before. Yeah. So, so uh, it's basically that it came out later. Yes, right. Pastor, mm -hmm. God using weaker I, I want to, to especially, briefly. and people think that Moses ran away because of the fear. Of course, verse, uh, verse 14, 15 mm. gives that idea mm. that Moses feared and said, to sh uh, and said, surely this thing is known. When Pharaoh heard of this matter, he sought to kill Moses, but Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian, and he sat down by a well. By a casual reading of that, would look like uh, he was really, uh, mm. uh, he was afraid of his life, he was, he was running away. Because that's an image we are capturing mm. of Moses, mm. of a very weak person. Mm. But then, as I said, God has a way of turning your weakness mm. into something that is very positive. Right. If you read Hebrews 11, you'll mm. be surprised this narrative is very different. Mm -hmm. Look at uh, verse uh, 24. It looks like we didn't have that part. 11:24. By faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Mm -hmm. Whereas Moses wow. meant Pharaoh's daughter. Mm -hmm. choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. Mm. Verse 26, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he looked to the reward. That's why he goes away. Mm. It ends by saying, by faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. All right. mm -hmm. For he endured a him who is invisible. He had an idea, oh, I serve yeah. a living God. Mm -hmm. And then he ends verse 28, by faith, I mean, let me just end by verse 27. Mm -hmm. So that he was running away, he may have been weak, but then he gets to a point and thinks, no, I'm not running away. Right. Mm. I serve a better God. Mm. I should not be afraid. Mm. So in the end, to him, it was an act of faith. That is uh, the whole, you know, Hebrews 11. Mm -hmm. And so to give me, this gives me a, a lot of encouragement, especially as a pastor, a young one, mm. that uh, God will use my weaknesses into becoming a very huge strength. Right. Wow. Thank you. Pastor, just uh, in some reform, uh, verse 23, 25, as uh, your closing <laughs> remarks. Yeah, um, well, now we move from Moses. Mm -hmm. Now we come back to the nation mm -hmm. of Israel. Uh, slavery, bondage is persisting there. It is uh, getting even worse, and the people are crying out to God. Mm -hmm. They I eventually come back to their senses. They, they get, I mean, you know, the circumstances, mm -hmm. yeah, and that's why we thank God for everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think as we, in, the, in our next episode, when we move there, you now start seeing God as a God who hears, mm -hmm. as a God who sees, and as a God who acts. Wow. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming on board and for of such wonderful words that you have spoken to us. And of course, our dear viewer, I hope that you really enjoyed this discussion. Thank you very much for being with us. I can't say any more. Uh, just remember that we are also there on social media. Hope Channel Kenya is our page and also on YouTube and at Hope underscore Kenya is our Twitter Thank you very much. May God bless you. Now we'll end with a word of prayer from Pastor Kabira. Thank you, Lord. Allow us to be like Moses. Help us to be able to be ready when you call us. And especially, may you give us a special life in which we'll be able to acknowledge you've brought us in a way that is different from others for a purpose in this world. For we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you.